Hey, the title for tonight is New Levels, New Devils. Whoa. I'm just going to call it what it is. Whoa. It's something that I have said plenty of times, just like in conversation. You know what? New Levels, New Devils. This is what it means. If you want to go further into the kingdom of God, don't expect the darkness, the dark forces of evil to say, oh, this guy or this gal gets a pass. Jesus didn't get a pass. None of us get a pass. Though we have eternity, we get, a, we get a free pass of a gift of eternity, which is Christ. We do not get a pass from the temptations and the wicked forces of 2020 and every other year that's there. So new levels, new devils. You, you may have just thought until recently that Ephesians 3.20 was just a cute verse. But as you begin to let that rule over your life and believe that there is more and there is still more, there is abundantly more, then you begin to step into that. And as you do, guess what? Attack from the devil wants to come. You may have thought, you, you probably in the room, and you may have thought, I'll never stand up and pray out loud in front of people. But then you do. And what you think will come is incredible breakthrough and all, all now you stood up and pray and the devil's not coming after you anymore but instead the devil says no I gotta go after them even more now you thought man if I started tithing then just everything would fall into place and though it aligns our life and our finances with the will of God it doesn't mean that the devil's not mad about it because he hates money in the kingdom of God the devil hates any time and any money set aside for purpose did you know this so anytime you take something and you try for it to have purpose, the devil's already mad. It doesn't have to even be good purpose. So if you say, I'm going to take a few hours off right here. No, the devil does not want you to. Because you might rest. That rest might have purpose. You say, I'm going to give somebody $5. I'm going to pay for somebody's drink. No, no. The devil does not want you to do that because that would have purpose. That would bless someone. That would be generous. And the devil hates generosity. The only thing he gives generously is lies. So new levels, new devils for the people in the room that are seeking God. As you go further into the presence of God, expect resistance to come from the enemy. Don't be a fool. Stand up and share your testimony, yes, and do it boldly. And don't be scared of what the devil's got. But do have your shield of faith up for the next week to stop the flaming darts of the evil one as he comes with accusation, as he comes to break down your confidence, as he comes to destroy your testimony. Because what he wants is to kill and to steal and to destroy and to break down every good thing inside of you. So I want to bring you to a spiritual discipline tonight. That I believe is going to help every person in the room when they decide that it's time to go to new levels and new devils begin to come, what do we do? And I know spiritual discipline itself is not a sexy word. I'm not trying to make sexy words tonight. I'm trying to help you be successful in the kingdom of God. I'm trying to help you live a life rooted in Jesus Christ. So disclaimer, all of those not trying to go to new levels, you don't need this. If you're trying to stay chill and you're not trying to do anything in the kingdom of God and you don't want to grow in your faith, then you know you can go ahead and put your AirPods in. You do not need this message. But for every person that's here tonight that is in any way interested in standing up against the evil forces that are trying to come at you, if any person is interested to say, no enemy, you cannot have my family, my marriage, my life, or my mind. If there is any person, then you got to have what I'm about to share tonight. You got to have it. Spiritual discipline. You ready? It's fasting. Spiritual discipline is fasting. This is what's going to take you to the place that as you go to new levels, as you begin to, to grow in your faith, this is going to take you to the place where you are prepared to not just be obliterated or, as the word said, sifted like wheat when the enemy comes after you. The spiritual discipline of fasting. Matthew chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 16, shows us that when we fast, not if, but when, meaning it is a part of biblical life. In the same text, it says when you pray, when you give, when you fast. It's not saying, hey guys, if you decide as Christians, it's saying every single person that wants to grow in their faith, 
this is a part of spiritual life. And it's a bummer, saying it lightly, to use the word bummer, that the church has forgotten about this as a general rule. That, that we have been so surrounded by churches and spiritual leaders that have forgotten to teach on the goodness, the fruit, and the spiritual discipline that comes when we as Christians choose Jesus above everything else. Now, I'm not saying you have to go your whole life fasting, fasting, fasting is what you always have to do. In the same way when we talk about giving, I don't say you have to give away every dollar. In the same way when we talk about serving, I'm not saying you have to quit your job and go be on the corner and serve everyone that's there. That's not what we're saying. But we are saying it's part of life. Jesus fasted, the disciples fasted, Ezra fasted, Samuel fasted, Elijah fasted, Daniel fasted, John the Baptist fasted, Esther fasted, King David fasted. Should I keep going about people of faith that have fasted? I'll go here. Sam has fasted, Michaela has fasted, Mike has fasted, Lisette has fasted. Should I keep going? David has fasted, Victoria has fasted. The people of God are seeking after him, and they want wholeheartedly to go after him. Amen. So fasting is not just skipping a meal. You may have heard of this before. Your doctor says, hey, you need to fast for the day before you come into the appointment. Let me just tell you something. They can call it what they want to call it. That's not biblical fasting. <laughs> biblical fasting is not just, oh, I skipped a meal today. I skip a meal all the time. Just, I just forget. <laughs> oh, it's 4 o'clock. I missed lunch. I missed lunch today. Didn't have lunch. Wasn't fasting. Was I seeking God and praying? Absolutely I was. We had breakfast this morning. If you want to call it morning, I don't even know what time it was. It wasn't that early. We had breakfast, and then I just, I haven't eaten since. So I can't be like, oh, here I am. I'm just fasting. No, no, no. Fasting is setting aside physical food for a spiritual purpose. There's intentionality in it. Let's call, let's call it supernatural seeking. Because prayer is seeking after God. Scripture is seeking after God. But when we, when we partner those with fasting, now I believe we have hyper-focused our intentionality. We have, we have hyper-speed now in our intentionality with going towards Jesus. See, some of you, the last two weeks, listening on prayer and scripture and applying that to your life, you come here and you did the prayer walks, you got in the word of God and you, and you read it and, and you just begin to stir up your faith and the devil wants to come and he wants to cut your legs out from under you. But when we fast, we begin to step into even stronger spiritual wavelengths than we can in the flesh. Because we're pushing down the desires of the flesh at their most at their most basic need, nourishment. And we're choosing even our most basic need that we're setting aside. I'm going to fast for three meals, and I'm setting aside my most basic needs, food. Food such as gummy bears, no. My most basic needs, I'm setting them aside for what? Not for fun, not for pride. Not for my glory, not so that I look good, not to check a box, not for religiosity, not to make you think I'm better than I am, not to post about it, not to share about it, not to brag about it. I'm setting it, up, I'm setting it aside for one purpose, to seek God. This is fasting. Proverbs 18, 17 says, I love those who seek me. Those who seek me, find me. Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and the door will be opened. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask, seek, knock. Most of us go up to the door, stand there. Like it's one of those, like it's one of those Walmart doors, but it's open for us. Most of us just think roaming around is seeking. No. Seek, it's intentionality. It's looking for something. You know the parables in Scripture where the, there's, the lost, there's the lost coin and there's the lost sheep. It, like you think Jesus was just roaming around. He's like, if Jesus is just going around, oh, hey, you know what? You happen to be here. Go ahead and jump on my team. No, Jesus is intentional. He wants your heart. He wants humans 
to, to know the goodness of God. So intentional that death was placed so that resurrection could be there, so that sin could be nullified, so that you could have eternity, and we won't skip a meal for the Jesus that died. So I'm inviting you into not something easy, something mature, because I know there's people in the room that have been praying and have been seeking and have been reading, and yet in that place, they've been finding that they can't stand against the addictions that are coming at their life. So I want to give you the key tonight in the Word of God. Jeremiah 29, 13. Seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Let me show you an illustration I think will help us during this time. Kind of break this down because fasting is complex. It's hard to explain just in a short amount of time what is fasting, what is it like. Let me just show you real quick. You love illustrations, right? I do too. They're great. Bought this spoon for my wife because she wanted to get peanut butter out of the peanut butter jar. And she needed like a long spoon, you know. Now it comes an illustration spoon. Praise God. This is what fasting is like. Let me show you. We in this, now no illustration is airtight, but we're having some fun tonight, okay? We start off as this cup, empty. We have no Jesus, we have no nothing. All of us, dead, empty, going to hell. That's how we start off. But then we encounter somebody maybe. Maybe we go outside and we see the goodness of the stars in the sky. The Holy Spirit speaks to us in a supernatural way. We're in a, we're in a, a worship experience, and, and we just, boom, it, 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 we, our eyes, are the veil is lifted off, and we realize there's more to life. We need Jesus. So praise God that he pours into us. And he begins to fill all the spots that were empty before, like nothing else can. And if I had plenty of time, I would pour all the other things of this in here and show that we tried. Maybe many, lots of us tried. Maybe it was drugs or alcohol or sex or whatever it was, smoking, to try to fill the spots and nothing could. But finally Jesus did. And so we're so excited. But guess what? The way of the world is after us. And as soon as we go to a new level, there's a new devil. And when I say that, I just mean the forces of evil begin to ramp up. And so I have objects of sin, Oreos. Oreo thins. It's like, you know, it's a light sin. But I got two of them, so it's a double light sin, so watch out. It's a lot of illustration right there. So life comes, man. It comes after us, and next thing we know, it's getting in us, and it's like all on us. And we didn't want to sin, and we didn't want to do that, and we liked this whole, you know, high feeling of being high for Christ and living for Jesus. But here comes sin. It's after each one of us. And you know, as soon as... Sin is having its way. Life will have its way as well and just stir us up, you know. And all of a sudden, what was empty but then filled with the pure presence of God now looks like this. And we say, man, this is not what life is supposed to be like. It shouldn't be like this. So you know what we do? We do what any good Christian does. We begin to Seek the presence of God. And it begins to pour into us in a way. And guess what? A lot of the sin begins to come out. Praise God. It's looking less bad than it was. It's looking pretty great. And the presence of God continues, continues, continues. But no matter what we do as we're seeking God, we can't seem to get all of the crap out of us. And it's like, hey, I've broken two addictions, but I can't break three. I've begun to be a better dad, but I still can't seem like I'm overcoming all of my things. And so we're here, and we don't know what to do. And let me just tell you, this is what fasting is like. Fasting is like this. It takes all of the crap, and it dumps it out of us in a fast way. So you can keep doing what you're doing, praise God. You can keep doing what you're doing, and you can go the slow way. And in months and months and years, you'll learn, and the process of sanctification will have its way, and the Holy Spirit will not fail, and he will come after you, and he will cleanse you, and he will restore you. And I'm not talking about salvation, I'm talking about life. Yeah. I'm talking to believers tonight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you can fast, and you can empty yourself, so that the presence of God can pour into you in a rich way, never ending, always going, always enough, always more. And that when it does, and that when it does, 
it gets all the space. The presence of God doesn't have to find space around your addiction and your time to get into your life. The presence of God has it all. All of your life, it's fully empty and prepared for the presence of God. And this is what I'm talking about. And I don't know where your life, where, where you're at or what your life is like and all the things that's going on. But here's what I know is that as we empty ourselves out in fasting, God will begin to pour in in an unfiltered way like never before. So we can go the slow way or we can go the fast way. We can keep coming and worshiping God and asking him to pour into us and find space all around where we are. And like, okay, God, you have about 20 minutes here to pour into us. Make it really count. Or we can empty ourselves completely from the most basic place and say, let's just make sure we're all the way. There's nothing in us so that everything God wants to pour in us can pour in us and overflow out of us and onto the communities and onto the floors and onto the concrete and into the streets and into the schools. Let me give you just a few expectations to have. I hope this week as you begin to decide, you know what? I have been wanting new levels, but I've been held back by the new devils. And now I say, you know what, devil? You can't have me. Because now I know a new trick in the word of God. Now I know a new secret in the word of God. I have found the deeper parts of God's heart, and I will pursue after them. So I want to give you a few expectations for that. The first is, expect, this is while fasting. Expect to fast. Feel empty and choose to be full. Expect to feel empty and choose to be full. I want to give us a challenge this week to say, can we fast one day? Can we fast three meals this week? Some of us have about 20 to 40 meals, depending on who you are. I'm like more on the 20 side out of forgetfulness, but some weeks I'm on more of the 40 side. It just kind of depends, you know? Out of those... Three, for Jesus. Not just to not eat, but to seek God. And while I do it, guess what? I'm going to feel empty. Because I'm literally pouring myself out. But at the same time, I'm going to choose to be full. Because I'm not just not eating food, I'm feasting on the word of God. I'm not just not eating food. I'm feasting on the presence of God. I'm not just not eating food. I'm seeking after the heart of God. I'm not just saying, oh, man, I'm hungry. I'm thinking about hungry. Every time I think I'm hungry, I'm going to be hungry for the word of God. I'm choosing to be hungry for the word of God. Not on my feelings, but on my faith. It's a spiritual practice. If practice was easy, then we just wouldn't do it. We practice harder than it's the game. It prepares us for the game. It prepares us for what God has for us. The flesh will fight back. Many of you might get headaches because your body, be transparent with you, which I am. Is that okay? Can I keep being real? Because your body is addicted and leaned on caffeine or cigarettes or whatever it is. I'm not shaming you. I'm just painting the right picture. I'm just saying, when you begin to step out and want to prepare yourself for what's coming, your flesh will not want it at first. Because your flesh wants no part of what the Spirit needs. Your flesh is always against what the Spirit needs. What the Spirit wants, the flesh doesn't want. The Spirit says go out and evangelize, the flesh says take a nap. The Spirit says work hard even when your boss is a punk. The flesh says I'll show him what's right. Right? The flesh and the Spirit rarely align. You have to get the flesh caught up to where the spirit is. So expect to feel empty. Choose to be full. Expect the natural and choose to rebuke it. Don't think. Don't think that you're going to begin to fast. And nothing's going to come into your schedule. Every single time that I pick any day to fast, something tries to oppose it. It's usually, for me, something casual. A lunch opportunity, nothing that seems threatening. Just, just, you know, oh, this or that, whatever it may be. It's, oh, you know, you should probably go ahead and eat. But it's just anything to get in the way of me keeping my commitments to God. And so I need to expect 
that the natural is there because it's not going away. Here I am in my body. One day I'll have a new body, but now I have this body. I need to expect that, but I need to choose to rebuke that. No headache. You do not decide my day. And I do not need, you, you decide your life, but I decide mine in the Spirit of God. And I do not need an Advil to get past the headache because the Holy Ghost is more powerful than a hundred Advils. So though I know the natural's there, I choose what I rebuke and what I accept in the presence of God, in the kingdom of God. Now, if I want to live in an earthly realm, then I follow those rules. But I'm not a citizen of this realm. I'm a citizen of a different kingdom. So I drive by a different speed limit. I look at different signs. I know things others don't know. So everyone doesn't have to understand why I'm choosing to fast. And it's not their business. I don't got to bring them into every conversation because they may not know. But the Spirit of God knows. He will teach, He will guide, and He will instruct. Expect the natural. Choose to rebuke it. The last of the three. Expect to receive and choose to give. Let me tell you what I mean. I want your expectation to be that as you're emptying yourself out, that you know God has something for you to receive. I refuse to walk away empty-handed in the presence of God. I will be the dog at the foot of the table eating the scraps. I will be the neighbor knocking on the door who will not relent until you open it. I will be persistent because I don't want to be in the presence of God and leave empty-handed. And my hope is that you are here tonight, whether you like the sermon or fasting or you like me or you like illustrations or you hate all of it, you get to choose whether or not in the presence of God you leave empty-handed. In the world, we say, you get out of it what you put into it. I say, expect to receive. But at the same time, choose to give. Sometimes when we're in our lowest spots, we think it's okay not to serve. We think it's okay not to give. We think it's okay to pull back. And what I'm saying is, even as I'm being poured out as a drink offering, as Paul writes in his epistle, still yet, I am generous all the more. Even as I, I am empty and depleted, and I'm two days into not eating, and I'm tired, and I'm moody, and I'm expecting God's going to deposit in me what I need, but even in that moment, whether I feel it, whether I don't, whether it's there or whether it's not, I'm choosing to give others what they need. So in the midst of my soul searching and seeking after God, I don't stop serving the people that are around me. I don't say, no, baby, I can't go help you right now because I'm fasting. That's the opposite of what fasting is trying to do. No, I can't have this conversation right now because I'm fasting. No, you need to have this conversation right now while you're fasting so you can see all the boo-boo that's going to come out of you so then you can be like, oh, guess what? That was in me. We want to say, oh, no, it's just hangry. You know, it's just, I'm hangry. It's like, no, 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 that's the real you in there. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so when I'm fasting and I snap off, I'm like, you know what? I'm just not strong enough to hold that back like I usually am because it's, it's always in there. I'm just usually a little bit more keen to pull back that frustration. And now I'm so depleted, I can't hold it back. So you're getting unfiltered me right now. You're getting the cup poured out. And when it's poured out, it has to go somewhere. So as I'm being poured out those first hours or those first days, it's good of me to keep a close eye on what's coming out because that means it's in. And I don't want it to come back in. So if I'm angry or short or frustrated or irritated, I need to take caption of that and write it down. Man, I am irritated so that when I do empty myself and the presence of God begins to pour in, the devil doesn't come over at the same time and start pouring his irritation back in. He'll do it. All you have to do is turn the TV on. You can watch all the dysfunction, it pours right into your brain. And then you wonder, why am I dysfunctional? You watched it, you studied it, you learned it. Year after year after year, you watched broken relationships, and so you lived broken relationships. Get around some good relationships and get that coming into you and watch good relationships come out of you. This is why it's important who we hang around. So practical point for this week. Pick a day, write this down. Pick a day and fast three meals. You want to fast six? 
Fast six. Good for you. It's great. Fast a week, fast a week. I, but if it's your first time, just pick one day, fast one day, skip your meals, and seek God. Practical point. Write this down. Start the year off with Fast 365. As a church, in January, we're going to tell you more. I just want to plant the seed in your mind that in January, we're going to start the year off with a Daniel fast together. Right? Multiple days. Sometimes, when you're going more than one day, a lot of times, so that everyone can do it together and go the same speed, it's, it's better sometimes to do a fast everyone can get on board with. And so instead of saying, like, I hope this week that you drink water for three meals. That's what I hope, right? But if you can't, Daniel fast. Do fruits and vegetables. No meat, no sweet, no bread. You'll, you'll see a difference. You're like, oh, that's easy. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. Proud of you. Proud of you, sister. We'll set that aside for the first 14 days of the year. This is a vision that God put on my heart probably about a decade ago at this point. And he said, when you pastor a church, lead them at the first part of the year to fast and give me the first part of the year. And since 2010, Lisette and I have been doing this together for a decade. And for the last several years of the church, we've been doing that together. And you know what? The first year, maybe 10 people did it. The next year, maybe just only like 20 or 30 did it. But the next year, more did it. And the next year, more did it. And this year, more are going to do it. And the more that participate in seeking God in a totally unhindered way, watch what happens in the cities and in the schools and in the houses that are around us. Watch what God begins to do. Because it says in his word that he loves those who seek him. Hey, fasting is a, is a, a very in-depth topic. And I've given it 20 minutes or less. And you may have a lot of questions. You may have things that you want to ask or, or insight that you like. I'm super confused. Honestly, Mac, that was a very entertaining little, little you know, illustration, but I'm just totally lost. I don't get it. Never heard of it. Don't know what it is. Don't feel bad. Here's the deal. I'm going to put a, a phone number on the screen. This is our authentic cell. Will you, will, will you like, take a picture of that, write it down, do whatever you want to do if you care. And you can, you can text me any questions you have this week about fasting. I'd love to know what day you're fasting. I can be praying with you and saying, oh, man, I'm cheering you on at the same time. I'm going to take some time and be praying for all those that are fasting this week. Maybe you're like, hey, I'm really confused. Could you give me some more biblical you know, references to fasting? Show me some more biblical texts. I, I just kind of rattled off some times people fasted. But, I, I mean, I, didn't, I can trudge you through the scriptures of just, like, showing you text after text. And then if you'll take that number down or maybe you already have that authentic number, then you can just text me and be like, hey, I got some more questions. Because I would love to walk with you through that because I believe in it. And I don't think it's just a shotgun thing. Like, I just throw it out there like, hey, guys, everyone, everyone fast. And then, boom, like, it's just like your life is all changed because, you know what, you're still exploring this together. It's like learning a new spiritual principle for some of us for the very first time. But here's what I promise is when we seek God, we find him. Yeah. Scripture, man. Scripture. So speaking of fasting, speaking of water, we have something really exciting. We have a baptism to celebrate tonight. I, I am really looking forward to it. I'm really excited about it. We get to celebrate new life. I'm going to go ahead and ask the band to come on up here. I'm going to ask you to stand up as you, if you would. And then I'm going to ask also, Zach, would you go ahead and come on up here, man? So, Zach found us at Authentic because he knew about the witchcraft store at the end of the way. That's, that the presence of God ran off and isn't there anymore. Um, and he knew about the gaming stop the gaming store that's right there too and so he used to go he used to walk from a ways away to go to the to go to the gaming store and to go to the witchcraft spot and he came one night and they were both closed and he was like dang I just walked all this way he saw some crazy people outside being way too excited made friends with them and decided just to go ahead I'll just walk on into this church and you know as the Lord was changing his heart church wasn't that unfamiliar to him and spiritual places weren't that unfamiliar because he was already a part of a church but just being frank and I asked his permission to share all of this just being frank it was the devil's church and I don't mean in the way of like oh yeah we're all lost in going to hell because we you know we all start off that way I mean in the way of I'm in a cult and I'm seeking after the devil 
we do things to serve the devil. And so to come into a spiritual place and to know what it is to submit under a king, he already knew because he was submitted under the wrong prince. So when the Lord began to change his heart, talk about new levels, new devils. He went to his friends who were in this cult with him and he just began to share, hey, I'm, I'm visiting a church. All of a sudden, all of them turned their back on him. Anybody but me and Zach ever had a bunch of people turn their back on you because of Jesus Christ? Then, he's praying and seeking God. And a demon shows up in his room. I'm inviting you into this. You can think he's crazy. You can think I'm crazy. But this stuff happens. And the deeper you go into the evil forces, the stronger it is to break the yokes of those things on your life. And tonight we break some more yokes, don't we, Zach? When, when you first, if you were here when Zach first started coming, his name was Albert. We don't call him Albert anymore. That's his old name. He chose a new name. Sometimes you got to choose a new name. He didn't just choose to change his name. He chose to speak the name of Jesus. So he's laying in bed one night. This demon, this devil comes and starts choking him. And whether it happens in the flesh or in the spirit, we care not. He couldn't breathe and he's choking, he's choking, he's choking. He doesn't know what to do. And he remembers something spoken here. He remembers a Bible that was given to him. And all of a sudden, he declares the name of Jesus over that, over that spirit. And it's not just a cute song, Zach. Devil's got to flee at the name of Jesus, am I right? So you can think it's weird, you can think it's wrong, you cannot agree, but here's what we know. We celebrate new life tonight. We dunk him in the water to show the death of Jesus. We bring him up to show the resurrection of Jesus. And we break yokes tonight through the obedience of salvation in Jesus' name. Wow, wow, man, I am so pumped up after that worship and after that message, so very good. I'm so encouraged. I hope you guys are encouraged for your week. Hey, we've got an awesome week coming up. This week, we have our Kingdom Outreach, which is taking place right after prayer. So if you haven't been to prayer, get to prayer, and then directly right after that, meet us, because we're gonna go out for our Kingdom Outreach. So very powerful. Hey, I wanna take a moment to just thank everyone right now who has been giving so faithfully week to week, who's been just giving sacrificially through all that God has already given to us. There's a couple of ways that you can give if you'd like to partner with us. You can either give through Venmo or you can go to authentic.church and give under the give tab. Hey, it's going to be a powerful, powerful week. I hope to see you guys at the five.